Hi, I've got a treat for you today. This is a tool that I think you're going to find really useful, especially if you're quite new to highs um, and you're not as familiar with building highs. But this is something you can use if you're more advanced and you know what you're doing. I use this all the time and it's just a really great shortcut. So what I'm talking about are some scripts. I've got three of them, one for Linux, one for Mac and one for Windows and these will build highs for you. So you don't have to go to GitHub and download the source code and then uh, open producer and then open your compiler and then build. It, it will just do all of that for you. So let me demonstrate it. So I've got Linux here. I'm using virtual machines, so I've got Linux here, Mac OS Ventura here, and Windows is hiding at the back and popping things up at me. And here are the scripts. So there's the Windows one, there's the Linux one, and there's the Mac OS one. So let's start with Mac OS because that's the slowest to build, so we'll get that one going first. So we're going to open a terminal. And the first thing you need to do on Mac is make sure you have permission to run this file because the security system will stop you just running random files, which is good. So in the terminal, we're going to type chmod plus x. Uh, is there a way I can zoom this in? Because that is quite zoomed out. Aha, there we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. chmod plus x. We're going to add a space and then we're just going to drag this file onto the terminal and hit enter. And that now gives us permission to run this file. Now Heise is going to be built in whatever folder you have this file located. So it's just on my desktop. So this is where Highs is going to be built, which is fine. But if you want it in a different location, move this file to a different location. So again, we're just going to drag it into the terminal and hit enter. And now it's going to build Highs. And this is going to grab the master branch and uh, compile that for us. And we'll leave that going. We'll look at it in more detail in a little while, but this is going to take a, a bit to run. Okay, let's move on to Linux. So again, we're going to open a terminal. I'm going to type chmod plus x. Well, I can't figure out how to zoom in on this one, but that's okay. We can just drag our script in here again, hit enter. So now we have permission to run it. And again, we just drag it onto the terminal window and hit enter. And that's going to do the same thing. And now we go to Windows. Here's the script. And on Windows, it's even easier. We don't need to give it permission. We don't need to open a terminal window. You just double click the script and it's going to start doing its thing. Okay, so let's take a look inside one of these scripts so we can see what it's doing. And they are pretty much the same on all three operating systems, so just some slight differences. So this is what it's doing. Um, if you want to change the branch that it's pulling from, it's pulling from the master branch. If you want to change it, just change this word master here to develop or whatever branch you want to pull from. So it's setting up some variables there. Then it's downloading highs. It's um, creating a folder called highs, which in Linux is on my desktop there. And then it's cloning the repo from GitHub and it's checking out the branch. So master in our case, then it's extracting the SDKs. So that zip file that you always have to extract from the inside the tools folder, it's doing that for us. Then on Linux, it's actually building producer because the version that comes with highs isn't always compatible with the version of Linux you're using. So for Linux, it builds producer. It doesn't do that on Windows and Mac. And then it builds highs, so it just runs Producer and then compiles the file and it's doing the release configuration. And that's pretty much it. So it's doing all the steps that you'd usually do manually. It's just automating it. Now, there are some prerequisites, of course. So you must have Git installed. So you've got to have Git installed on Linux, which I think it is by default. You've got to have it installed on Mac and you have to install it on Windows. Windows, there's a bit more work to it. I'll leave a link in the video description where you can find out how to install Git on Windows. Other than that, you need to have your compiler installed. So on Windows, it's Visual Studio 2022. And if we take a look at the script on Windows, we can see exactly what it's looking for. So this is the one, it's the community edition, and it's looking for that file there, MS Build. So if you install a different version of Visual Studio, it's not the community one, perhaps it's the professional one, and it's in a different location, you need to update this string here. This path needs to point to msbuild.exe. 
on macOS. It's using Xcode. And again, we can take a look at the script. So you don't really have to do anything on macOS. It's just going to use uh, Xcode build, which is in the system path. So you don't need to edit any paths, but you do have to have XC pretty installed. And there's instructions for that on the Highs GitHub page. I'll show you that. So if we scroll down, let me just center this so it's a bit easier to see. So if we go to the OSX section here, and here is the instruction for installing XC Pretty. And then on Linux, as well as installing your compiler, GCC, G++, you've got to have all of these dependencies installed. And that's a one-click install. You just click this to copy and then paste it into your terminal and hit enter, and it will install all of those. If you're on a non-Debian-based distro, the packages might have a slightly different name. So you might have to adapt that a little bit. Okay, so to recap, on Windows, you need to install Git and Visual Studio. On macOS, you need to install Git, Xcode, and XC Pretty. And on Linux, you need to install all of these dependencies and your compiler, which will probably be GCC, and Git. So by default, it's building the release version, and we can see that here on Linux, so it's release. If you wanted to build the debug version, just change that to debug. On Windows, it's also there. Let's open that up. So on Windows, we are building the release. Uh, where is that? Here it is, release. So again, you can change that. Something else you might also want to do is if you're a bit more advanced and you know what you're doing and you want to build with Faust, you can add with Faust there and save the file and rerun it and it will build the Faust version. Uh, for that, you do have to have all the Faust uh, stuff installed, the library and whatnot. So this is the standard producer. So what is actually happening here is it's choosing one of these configurations. So we're building the release configuration, but here's the release with Faust. So uppercase R, lowercase W, uppercase F, and you can see the other requirements it's got here. So it must have this uh, Faust include and this Faust lib thing. So it's a bit beyond the scope of this video, but if you do want to do that and you're already building with Faust, all you've got to do is change this here. And that's the same on macOS. So we've got release with Faust on, where is it? Release with Faust on macOS. And again, it's got its own prerequisites. For Linux, there isn't one by default, but if you're using my fork of highs, then I've added uh, this one here, uh, Linux make file Faust, and it, it does the same thing. Okay, and that's all there is to it. You just leave this running and it's going to build highs. So we're building all three at once. And I'm just running um, virtual machines here on an Intel NUC, so it's it doesn't need a lot of power just to compile highs, but it will take a while. Uh, if you're on a more powerful system, especially on Mac, you might want to make a slight adjustment to the script. I'll just show you that. Okay, so on Mac, we have this one here, this option called jobs, and it's set to two. That's the number of CPU threads it's going to use. So by default, this is just using two threads, but if you've got a more powerful processor, you can increase the number of threads and it will build a bit more quickly. So it might be four or six or eight or something like that. Usually a power of two is what's recommended. You don't need to do that on Linux. On Linux, it's just going to use all of the threads available except for two, which it will leave for your system so that your system doesn't freeze up. So you don't have to worry about changing it on Linux. And on Windows, it's just going to use the default setup. So I think it by default just uses as many CPU cores as it has available, but there's nothing you have to actually specifically set. So while these scripts will build highs, that for me, they're just a starting point. What I actually do is if I open my projects folder, this is on Linux, but it's pretty much, just, I've got one of these, you'll see I've got projects here on Windows and projects here on Mac OS, so it's pretty much the same. Um, so here's my Rhapsody project and I've got a script here called build Linux and what this does is pretty much the same thing we're seeing here so it's so this is for Rhapsody so it's a little bit different but it's downloading highs extracting the SDKs same sort of thing building producer building highs but then I have another stage where I actually download Rhapsody from my git repo so I'm using codeberg in uh, this instance uh, so we're downloading Rhapsody and then we're doing the same thing. We're going through all the steps to build my Rhapsody instrument. So here we're building the standalone, here we're building the VST, 
and then we're putting everything in a zip file. And I've got the same sort of thing on Mac, except instead of zipping it, it runs it through uh, white box packages and then it code signs and notarizes. And on Windows, it does the same thing with uh, Inno setup. So because this downloads highs and then downloads my project from GitHub, I know that whenever I run this, it's going to build Rhapsody in this case with the latest version of highs and the latest version of my publicly available source code. So it's really quick and easy to do this. And it will work with private Git repos as well. It doesn't have to be code that you've made public. It takes a little while to set up, but once it's done, it's really worthwhile, especially on Mac OS where you've got code signing and notarizing and all that stuff. Uh, it's, it's really nice just to run a script and know that you're going to have a package delivered at the end that's got everything there that you need to send to the end user. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now and we're just going to let this run. So the Linux one is almost done we're at the linking stage. We're at the linking stage on Mac OS. You can see how much longer it takes on Mac OS because we started that one first. And Windows is already done. Okay, I'm not going to stop talking just yet then. So if we open up the highs folder, so on Windows, it's always going to build it on your desktop, no matter where you put this file. On Linux and Mac OS, it will um, put it in the same folder as this file. Uh, it just so happens that in this case, I've put the file on my desktop. So um, highs should have built now. If we go to standalone, build, Visual Studio 2022 x64 release app and there it is buried in here highs exe so there we go latest version built have a look at that 12th of august 23 that's today so that's it so we're done with windows so we can shut down the windows system now and now we just wait to see who's next linux or mac os i'll speed the video up but you can watch the clock in the bottom corner here to see how long it actually takes in real time. Okay, and that's the Linux one done. We can see we're at uh, 20 minutes past 12, so it's only taken an extra minute from when I said I'd speed the video up. So we go to highs folder, go to projects, go to standalone, build, Linux make file, build, and there it is, high standalone. If we were building the debug version, it would build much more quickly. So there's the Linux one done. And now we'll just wait on the old Mac to do its thing. Okay, so that's the Mac OS one done, finally. So let's open highs, uh, projects, standalone, builds, Mac OS X, build, release, and there it is. So you can see why I started the Mac one going first, because it takes ages. Uh, the Windows one, which we started last, actually finished first. So I'll be making these scripts available to all of my Patreon supporters at every tier. So from the lowest to the highest, it's available to all of you guys. And it's a little thank you gift for your continued support, which I really appreciate. If uh, you don't follow me on Patreon and you'd like to, you can follow the link in the description, which will take you there. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the like button, and share it with anybody you think might be interested. So that's all for this one. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.